Hello everyone, this is John with Ziptopia.org. Well, welcome to Oracle ACMA Packet Session Border Controller Simplified Configuration Part 1 Concepts. In this series, we are going to try to simplify Oracle ACMA Packet Session Border Controller aka SBC configuration. We are going to start with an important rule followed by a layered approach to the configuration. We'll then take a quick look at the front and back of an SPC and discuss how to console to it. The 90% rule, you might not have heard this before because this is something we came up with. Well, the total number of lines in an SPC configuration might be quite intimidating, but during new installations, if you pay attention, about 90% of these lines are left with default values. An average configuration to get an SPC up and running is actually short and sweet. That is why we start the Session Border Controller Simplified Configuration Series with introducing the 90% rule. Well, let's say we all agree that the 90% of the lines in an SPC configuration are left with default values. Well, where do we start? What order should we follow? With small exceptions, the configuration flow actually behaves according to the 7-layer OSI model. Keeping this in mind will help us remember the order we should follow. In the following tutorials, we will go over these piece by piece and the great thing about the SPC configuration is that most of the items in your screen are exactly what the sections are called. In other words, we will configure what is called physical interface in the SPC to assign virtual MAC addresses. We will configure what is called network interface in the SPC to assign IP addresses and so on. So when you look at certain things out of the box, you will realize how simple they actually are. Let's take a look at some ports, buttons and LEDs. On the left, we see the frontal view of a 3820 series SPC and on the right we see a 4500. Since this tutorial series is called Oracle ACMA Packet Session Border Controller Simplified Configuration, let's cut to the chase. In the front, all we care about the console port. And even that is because the console port in the front is enabled by default and the console port in the back is disabled. If and when you enable the console port in the back, you can skip these red arrows and what they are pointing to. The back looks pretty much the same in different SPC models. More importantly, the logic is exactly the same no matter how the back of the SPCs look. Let's go over some of the ports quickly. The console port, as the name implies, used to console to the SPC. Obviously something we need when we first get our hands on an SPC. While it is not required, if you want to use out-of-band management interface, management zero is your guy. Once it has an IP address, you can run a cable to this interface to connect to your SPC out-of-band. If you have a single box, not a redundant pair, you can skip management 1 and management 2 ports. Those are used to connect and synchronize two SPCs in a redundant pair. Now the good stuff. Let's say you are in a room with four doors. When someone comes in through door number 1, for example, you can point them to door number 4 to get out. Obviously, you have multiple scenarios here, like someone coming in through door number 3 can also be pointed to door number 1 to get out. This is basically what the SPC does here with these network media ports. Going back to the first example, door number 1 could be the first port here, labeled S0P0, and door number 4 could be the fourth port, labeled S1P1. Instead of someone coming in through door number one, port number one could be connected to your internal SIP environment and outbound calls from your users could be coming into the SPC through port one. 
Similarly, instead of door number four, port number four could be connected to your SIP trunk service provider and you point your internal user's outbound calls to port number four out of the SIP trunks. That is a very basic but accurate way to summarize what an SPC does. We mentioned the console ports a few times already. Let's see how we connect to the console port of an SPC. If you're lucky, you have an RJ45 to serial adapter that comes with the SPC shipments and have a serial port in your laptop PC. Otherwise, you can watch our SPC console adapter tutorial to create one yourself or order the adapter with your Oracle sales team. Connect one end of an Ethernet cable to the front console of the SPC and the other end to this console adapter. Now you can either connect this to your laptop or PC via a serial port or use a USB to serial adapter to connect via a USB port. Please note the serial connection parameters here that you need to use in order to cancel to your SPC. In this tutorial, we discussed certain Oracle ACMA packet session border controller concepts and got to a point where we can now focus on configuring an SPC. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, please let us know. Thank you.